Hello there! Today we are pretty much going to make the holy grail of rubber band guns, which is a full auto magazine fed rubber band pistol, specifically a Glock 19. Now loading this toy is very easy. Just put in the magazine and hook it into place. The firing rate of the rubber band gun is generally very high, but it can be altered by making some parts of the mechanism heavier or by using pre stretched rubber bands. Now these are the parts you're going to need to make this rubber band gun. About 20 by 30 cm of 12 mm plywood, 50 by 30 cm of 6 mm plywood, some small pieces of 4 mm plywood, then you will need some 4 mm and 6 mm dowels, and finally some springs and M8 hex nuts. The first step will obviously be to print out the templates. The download link is as always in the description below. Then you will have to cut the templates out, stick them to the corresponding ply and center mark all the holes. What should you do next? You guessed it, drill all the holes. This operation may seem boring. The next step will be to sort all the parts. I'm using an electric coping saw to do this. These should be all the wooden parts you should have got at this point. You should also have two springs and two M8 hex nuts. Begin the assembly by gluing the middle main body part to the outer shell plate. Do the same thing with magazine parts. If you did it right, the magazines should hook into place like I am showing it right now. Once the magazine is hooked into place, you can glue the backstop into place. You can glue the pins into place now, by the way. Okay, so bear in mind that you can only glue one side of the hook slash firing switch if you want to disassemble the magazine later on. After that, you'll want to sand all the moving parts. The first spring has to be glued into this place. This is to make sure that it returns into the original position after being pushed. The distinct click shows you that you have done everything right. After you put the plate back on, you should countersink all the holes the screws go into. Now this part is actually the core of the mechanism. You will have to glue the hex nuts onto this part to slow down its movement. Because force is equal to mass times acceleration, the greater the mass of this moving part is, the more force has to be used to get it moving, and therefore more kinetic energy is going to be absorbed from the wheel. 
This results in a lower firing rate, as stated before. So at this point you should put in a screw behind the trigger to prevent it from moving too far back. Also the Rattler should move very freely, but should not be able to fully rotate 360 degrees. As you can see when we load in the magazine and pull the trigger, the wheel can still move, but its movement is interrupted, which is exactly what we are looking for. Now close the lid, countersink and pre-drill the screw holes and put in the screws. Now if you haven't screwed up, everything should be working at this point. Sanding the outer shell isn't crucial for the mechanism, but is important for its final appearance. So I'll summarize this process in this quick collage. Now let's shoot this innocent plate of wood. And now a quick intermission by rubber bands. How to load your magazine. Just hook a rubber band onto the front of the magazine. Put it onto the wheel and rotate it one position back. You should hear the distinct click sound. Then just repeat that five to six times. And now back to our regular transmission. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't. If you want to ask a question or generally say something to me, then just write a comment. If you like this kind of content, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. Thanks and bye bye!